Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois. I'm glad you called. I will be able to make it tonight. No, you heard right, Angel. I've given up being a private detective. I've retired. Yeah, I'm going to learn to take it easy if it kills me. Once again, The Adventures of the Falcon. Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Dirty Dollar. According to the World Almanac, New York is the city of churches. But you'd never guess it from my business. Instead of peace and quiet, all I've known is violence and death. Well, I've had it. No more playing cops and robbers for me. No more dealings with offbeat characters like Johnny Stone and Steve Haynes. Oh, in case you're curious, those are the two gentlemen getting out of the convertible on Forsyth Street. They're bookmakers' bookies, which means they take layoff money. Bets other gamblers are afraid to handle. I guess you might say they live dangerously, which often makes me wonder how they're going to die. Listen, Johnny, maybe you better let me handle this. No. Well, I don't like the way you look. I don't like it either, Steve, but what can I do? You know what I mean. Well, supposing I... I said no, Steve. I'll take care of Mr. Dollar myself. This the place? Yeah. Certainly doesn't believe in putting up front, does he? That you, Lisa? I was just getting ready to... What's the matter, Paul? <laughs> nothing, nothing except... This is a surprise. Isn't every day you get to entertain your boss? I suppose that's true. Shut up, Steve. Well, say, why don't you why don't you sit down? No, thanks, Paul. We can't stay long. Well, uh, well, can I get you a drink? Mm mm. You sure you wouldn't care for something? Now that you mention it, maybe I would. If it's all the same to you, I'll take how much is it, Steve? Two thousand five hundred sixty eight dollars and twenty three cents. Huh? Well, that's the way we figured it. I don't understand. You've got sticky fingers, Paul. Unfortunately, you got them glued to my money. Wait, you're wrong. I, I've worked for you for nine months. Did, did I ever once get out of line? There's always a first time. I give you my word. What did you do with the I money? I think that... I know, Johnny. Our friend Mr. Dollar is a student of the racing form. I see he picked Gallant Kid today at Hollywood. Is that how it went? I was going to return it, Johnny, honest. You never should have taken it in the first place. I trusted you, Paul. I don't let anyone abuse my confidence. Oh. Get up. No. I said get up. Let me go. Now, I'll give you 24 hours to make it good. $2,568.23. And I uh, want it to the last penny. Just a second. I said just a second. Is Mr. Stone in? He's asleep. Where is he? In there? Now, look, lady. Get your hands off me. Are you nuts. Now, get out of here before I... Hey, what's going on there? Nothing, Johnny. Go back to bed. I can handle this. No, you can't. So you are Johnny Stone. That's right. Well, this is a great... Hey, what's the idea? I wouldn't do that again. Why? Would you beat me up, too? Look, sister. Who are you? Lisa Dollar. Oh. You recognize the name? I believe my husband works for you. You got your tenses wrong. He did work for me. How could you do such a thing? How could you hit a man half your size just because he stood up to you? But you're not used to that, are you, Mr. Stone? What? You're used to people falling all over themselves to cooperate in your crooked deals. Is that what you think? That's what I know. But you don't frighten me. I've met men like you before. Bullies who always pick on someone weaker. Listen, sister. Shut up, Steve. Anything else you care to say? No, I think I've said enough. You just keep away from Paul. You are never to go near him again. Do you understand? I understand. 
Are you going crazy or something, Johnny? How could you take that, especially that slap in the puss? Forget it. Forget it? I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. That Paul must have really sold her a bill of goods. I guess she must trust him. Kind of nice, isn't it, Steve? Huh? Being able to believe what someone tells you. I don't get you. It's not important. Did she say her name was Lisa? Hey, you feel all right? I feel fine. Get the car. I'm going out. Without me? Without you. What's come over you, Johnny? I don't know. Maybe I'll have a better idea after I talk to a friend of mine. Now, get the car while I change. <laughs> Yes, sir. Can I help you? Mike Waring around? Well, he's kind of busy at the moment. Where is he? In the back? Look, mister, he gave me strict orders. He wasn't to be... Hey, come back here. Don't you understand English? I said... Come... Hello, Mike. Well, if it isn't Johnny Stone. I was thinking about you today. Must be mental telepathy. Well, I'd ask you to sit down, but you anticipated. Drink? No. Don't let that stop you. It won't. How about doing a little gum shoeing for me? <laughs> Haven't you heard, Johnny? I've retired. I heard, but I don't believe it. It's true. I've had it. I've had much too much. What are you talking about? This business of being a private dick finally got to me. They told me it would. You're not making sense. What are you, 36, 37? In this racket, you age fast. You see people at their worst. Guys would stab you in the back for two bits. Even with inflation. Yeah, and sometimes you even feel sorry for some of them. Especially when you find out what makes them tick. You must be bathing in lanolin plus. You're getting soft. I never claimed to be in your league, but that's the story. Now, suppose you hear mine. I hope it's more interesting. I had a boy, Paul Dollar, working for me. He's married to a girl named Lisa. Well, so far it ain't. I'd like you to find out everything you can about her. Johnny, you're not receiving me. I told you I quit. Why don't you get Martin Kane? This Lisa seems to be quite a gal, Mike. <laughs> she slapped me. You sound like you enjoyed it. I did. You better watch yourself, Johnny. You're acting almost human. And that would never do? Never. Well, see what you can find out about it. Look, I told I you... I know you're retired. But, Mike, you're a betting man, aren't you? So? So, I believe all women are alike. They're only out for one thing. I'll give you a thousand to one. This Lisa Dollar is no different from the rest. Well, I'd be a sucker to refuse those odds. Okay, Johnny, keep your checkbook handy. You got yourself a bet. Taxi. Oh, taxi. Well, where to, lady? 1427. Oh, just a second. I hate to repeat myself. Oh, mister. Oh, me? Yes, in case you're interested, I'm going home. Why would I be interested? Well, you must be. You've been following me for days. Oh, I'm slipping. I guess I was right to retire. Who are you? Mike Waring. And why are you doing this? Well, let's just say that... Hey, uh, will you people make up your mind? Either you want a cab or you don't? He's right. Mind if I join you? What? Well, you want to know why I'm making like a bird dog? All right. Thanks. Okay, driver, let's head uptown. I'll tell you when to stop. I don't know why I'm doing this. It makes absolutely no sense. You're curious. And you're a private detective. Well, let's say I was a private detective. Was? Now, skip it. I admit I'm acting like one now. You're working for Johnny Stone, aren't you? What makes you say that? Just a feeling I've got. Well, you're right. Peculiar boy, Johnny. He's very interested in you, Lisa. I'm overwhelmed. You should be. Johnny's got a very low opinion of mankind. Guess he's been burned too often. And your husband gave him a hot foot, too. What are you talking about? Why do you think Johnny slapped him around? Because Paul wouldn't cooperate in some crooked gambling scheme. Uh-uh. Paul got his hand caught in a till. Now, just a moment. That's not true. Look, Mrs. Dollar, I've done a little investigating. It's happened before with Paul. Once in Des Moines, another time... Yeah, but that was different. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one way to convince you. What's that? Your husband's IOUs. He owes over eight grand around town. How did you get these? Johnny made him good. I told him if it ever happened again, I'd... You'd what? Never mind. I hope your Mr. Stone is pleased with himself. No, this wasn't Johnny's idea. He didn't mean Driver, to... will you please stop? Uh, look, Mrs. Dollar, 
All right, now, either you get out or I will. Okay, Angel. Thanks for the ride, anyway. Sorry you didn't enjoy it. Okay, buddy, take the lady home. That you, Lisa? Yes, Paul? Where you been? You said you'd be home by five. I guess I'm undependable. But then so are you. Why did you do it, Paul? Why'd I do what? Lie to me. I lied to you? There wasn't a word of truth in that story you told me about Johnny Stone. I made a fool of myself. Honey, I swear... Oh, I... don't deny it, Paul. I saw the IOUs. You've been gambling again. Oh, Lisa, I'm no good. I don't know why you put up with me. I'm not going to. What are you doing? I'm leaving. Oh, no, you can't. I won't let you. I swear I'll never do it again. Please, please get out of my way. I know I've said it before, but this time I mean it. I couldn't live without you. Lisa, please don't do it. It's no use, Paul. We've played this scene for the last time. Just give me one more chance. You won't be sorry. Please, darling. You know how I love you. No, don't, don't, don't. Please. I'll make it up to you. You won't ever regret it. I, I, I've got to have time to think it over, Paul. But you'll be back. Say you'll be back. Let me go. No. Not until you promise. All right, Paul. I promise. One way or the other, I'll be back. Now let me go. Hello? Is that you, Trudy? Yes. This is Paul Dollar. Is Lisa there? Oh, no. Now, you got to tell me the truth. Have you seen her? Well, she was here, Paul, but she went out at 9 o'clock. Did she say where she was going? No. She promised to come home, but it's almost 11 now. Oh, don't worry, Paul. I'm sure she's all right. You're lying to me. She is there. No. Please, Trudy, let me talk with... Talk to... What is it, Paul? Paul! They say a dollar doesn't go very far these days. Well, this one was going nowhere. Two hours later, they had his wife down at headquarters. When I waltzed in, Sergeant Corbett was finishing his pitch. It's a lovely bit of salesmanship. Now, you've got to understand, Mrs. Dollar, I'm your friend. Thank you. No, I mean it. I don't blame you at all. Why, anybody in your place would have been fed up years ago. Your husband was no good. He was weak. Well, it's the same thing. No, it isn't, Sergeant. Paul meant well. He just couldn't help himself. Well, the point is... The point we... is, he's trying to trap you, Lisa. Well, if it ain't that high-flying bird, the falcon. I thought you retired. I have. I just dropped by the kibitz. Obviously, you know the lady. Obviously. How are they treating you, Lisa? All right. Why don't you tell them the truth? We're just getting ready to beat her when you walked in. Have you booked her? Yeah. The charge is murder in the first. Now, if she tells the truth, she might get off with 10 to 20. I have. I didn't kill my husband. You were going to leave him? No. Your bags were packed. I've been packing and unpacking them for the last eight years. And when you got fed up playing mama, you murdered him. Isn't that a little drastic? She could have divorced him. Maybe he wouldn't let her go. Oh, for Pete's sake, Corbett, Excuse why... Excuse me, Sergeant. Is it necessary that he stay? Well, not if you don't want him. I don't. Now, look, Mrs. Dollar, I want to help. After all, this is partly my fault. Come again? Well, I was the one who told her that Paul was up to his old tricks. How'd you find that out? I was doing a favor for a friend. Who? I'm no name dropper. You're forgetting something, aren't you? Concealing evidence in a murder case is a little more serious than passing a red light. You don't have to tell me that. I thought maybe it slipped your mind since you retired. Now, who's the guy, and why did he want you to check up on Mrs. Dollar? It doesn't have any bearing on this. Oh, doesn't it? It supplies a whole new motive. Suppose this man was in love with her. That's ridiculous. You know who he is? Yes, Johnny Stone. Oh, thanks a heap. Haskell, get a car ready. I want to pick up Johnny Stone. You're making a mistake. When I need your advice, Mr. Waring, I'll come and get it. Now, why don't you find yourself a park bench and wait like Barney Baruch? Hi, Johnny. Oh, Mike. Come on in. 
Well, I see I got here before Sergeant Corbett. Come again? He's on his way. What are you babbling about? Well, haven't you heard? Paul Dollar was murdered. So what's that got to do with me? Well, this may come as something of, of a shock, Johnny, but uh, you're a potential suspect. When was the last time you saw Lisa Dollar? Why? Because the police are inclined to think you two might have had a romance cooking. Oh, they're crazy. I only saw her that once. And that's the time you fell. I didn't fall. And why did you ask me to check on her? Oh, let's just say I was intrigued. Well, you say it. I wouldn't attempt to sell that to Corbett. Did you kill her husband? Mike, why should I? Well, you know human nature. You might have figured she'd never leave Paul as long as he needed her, and that would be forever. Well, you know a little about human nature yourself. Do I impress you as the kind of guy who'd let a woman take the rap? Why not? You're late. How did you get here before me? I got connections. I know a motorman on the Lexington Avenue Express. Mm, Taint funny, McGee. All right, Johnny, get your coat. Is this a pin? That's what it is. Now, let's shove off. Well, it's about time, Mike. What? Uh, Hold it. Don't move. You've blown your cork, Steve. Just stand still. Okay, sit down. Thanks. You won't think me nosy if I ask what's the idea. I just heard the cops picked up Johnny for Paul Dollar's murder. And you think I had something to do with it? No one else knew he was interested in that dame. She did. You're lying. Okay, have it your way. I'm gonna. He didn't kill Paul. Well, since you seem to know so much, who did? Me. Well, why don't you say something? Do you want to turn me in? How far would I get? You mean the gun? Forget it. Here. Huh? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Relax. Why did you do it? What difference does it make? We're going to ask you that at the headquarters. Okay. I was a lush till I met Johnny. That was 14 years ago. He straightened me out. I swore someday I'd make it up to him. And he told you he wanted Paul Dollar knocked off? He told me nothing of the kind. It was my own idea. I got eyes. I could see he went for Lisa. No, it won't wash, Steve. The cops will never buy it. Why not? I'm handing him a confession. Yeah, that's just the trouble. An unsubstantiated confession to murder is worthless. There has to be at least one outside piece of evidence linking you to the crime. Is this the same gun? No, I, I got rid of the other. Where? Down at Coney Island. Huh, that's pretty vague. Well, you couldn't expect me to make a map of the place? No, it's no good, Steve. I tell you, I killed him. I'm still waiting to be convinced. I shot him twice. That was in the papers. It was a 38. Likewise. Look, you got to believe me. Johnny had not... Wait a minute. How would it be if I dug up a witness? You mean there was one? Yeah. Where didn't I think of him before? Who? Never you mind. Just set up a date for us at headquarters. I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. <laughs> Hiya, Steve. What's the good word? Is Cokey Myers around? He's in the back. Thanks. What do you want with that crumb, anyway? Just be a good fellow and see we're not bothered. Well, that's you, Doc? Sorry to disappoint you, Cokey. Ah, oh, hiya, Stevie. Uh, if you're looking for more, No, he... I'm looking for you. Yeah? Smoke? Uh, thanks, yeah. I got a job right down your alley. Ah, you better get somebody else, Steve. My nerves are shot. It'll pay a hundred bucks. Why? A hundred clams. You could do a lot with that kind of dough. No, no, it's no use. I'm sick. If you could hold off a couple of days, maybe... I can't. Suppose I made it two bills. When would I get it? Right now. I guess I ain't so sick after all. Start counting out, fella. You just got yourself a boy. Hi, Sergeant. Huh? Oh, what did I do to deserve this? Nothing. That's why you should be grateful. Steve, come on in here and bring your friend with you. Come on, Cokie. Yeah, right, Steve. Hey, does this look like the Y? Why don't you find some other place to hang out? Quiet. Steve Haynes, Cokie Myers, Sergeant Corbett. Glad to know you. Hi. Haven't we met before? It's possible I work for Johnny Stone. Oh. Can I see him? His lawyer sprung him 20 minutes ago. Oh, that's swell. You'll be back. I wouldn't make book on it. I got Paul Dollar's murderer right here. You what? Okay, Steve, that's your cue. I did it, Sergeant. I killed Paul. Why? Well... Now, hold it. Don't you think we ought to have a stenographer in here? Why waste his time? Look, lunkhead, this isn't a rib. We've got everything, including a witness. 
All right, Koki. Tell him what you told me. Okay, uh, where do you want me to start? Right at the top of the page. Well, last night around 10.30, uh, Steve here came to see me. It seemed he wanted somebody to drive him. So? Uh, so uh, we took his car and I ran over to Forsyth Street. He got out and he told me to keep the motor running. About uh, five minutes later, he was back. Uh, there was a gun in his pocket. How do you know that? Oh, uh, because uh, while we drove down to Coney Island, he got a screwdriver and took it apart. And then what? Uh, well, uh, we parked in front of Steeplechase and uh, walked down the beach. Never and... mind the rest. Let me congratulate you boys. That's a lovely story. If you put it to music, you might have another South Pacific. Why, what's the matter? Don't you believe it? No. I tell you, I killed him, Sergeant. And Cokie's your witness? Yes. How much did you pay him? I resent that. You don't remember things so well, do you, Cokie? I get by. Well, what time did you get to Paul Dollar's place on Forsyth? Uh, around uh, five minutes of 11. Well, then how do you account for the fact that at 9.30 last night, a Cokie Myers was picked up for vagrancy on Chambers Street and wasn't released till one in the morning? Oh, no. Oh, yes. You were right to retire, Mike. Only your timing was off. You should have done it a week ago. Now, all you phonies, clear out. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there were no two ways about it. The Falcon had done it again. After Sergeant Corbett unveiled his haymaker, I watched him toss Steve Haynes and Cokie Myers out of the office. His footwork was beautiful. Then he turned on me, but I jabbed him off balance. I demanded to see Lisa Dollar. I always say, if you're short on brains, gall does just as well. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing this. Because you love me. Yeah, your regular store-bought doll. Haven't you got it through your thick skull what this is? Suppose you tell me. Another Snyder Gray case. The two of them teamed up together to murder her husband. Oh, you're crazy. Johnny only saw her once. Yeah, that was enough. Mrs. Dollar. Yes? You got company. Hello, Lisa. I don't want to appear ungracious, Mr. Waring. But you could do without me. Exactly. Now, you've got to believe I've been trying to act in your best interests. Why? You are not being paid. And that's just the way I want it. It doesn't jeopardize my retirement status. Did your husband have any other enemies? No. You sure? He'd embezzled before. And we'd always made the loss good. I'll do it this time, too. I don't see how. I'll manage it some way. I told Mr. Stone he wouldn't lose a penny. You told Johnny that when? Right after I discovered Paul had lied to me. Yeah, what'd I tell you? She's been seeing him all along. Do you remember the time, Lisa? Yes, it was nine o'clock. The clock was striking when I left Trudy's apartment. Who's Trudy? Her girlfriend, the one who reported the murder. But how could she... Hey, wait a second... I see it now. Let's go, Corbett. Where? Don't worry. I'll lead you there by the hand. Don't go away, Lisa. I'll be back for you real soon. Hello, Steve. Oh, hi, Mike. Sergeant? Hi. Johnny home? No. Mind if we wait? What do you want with him? Oh, I just dreamed up a couple more questions I'd like to ask him about uh, Paul Dollar's murder. I tell you, I did it. Oh, no. Let's not have that again. All right. So I got Cokie to perjure himself, but there was nothing else I could do. You wouldn't believe me? Maybe Trudy could help you out. Who? The girl Paul was talking to when he was killed. There was no girl. Oh, you mean on the phone? Haven't we had enough of this nonsense? Must be Johnny now. Hi, pal. What's going on here? Well, you're just in time to offer congratulations. Steve finally made it. Made what? The chair. And he did it the hard way. What are you babbling about? Uh, Corbett, who reported Paul's murder? I told you, a girl named Trudy Bergner. Well, if she didn't live in the same building, she must have heard the shots on the phone. That's what I said. Don't you see, Corbett? That piece of information wasn't released to the papers. No one but the killer could have known it. Why didn't I think of that before? Steve, you crazy fool. Why did you do it? I... I always wanted to do something for you. You know, to make up for all the swell things you did for me. When I saw how you went for Lisa, it came to me. You're not sore, Johnny? No. No, I'm not sore, Steve. And everything worked out fine. 
All right, fellas. Let's go. Tell me something, Mike. Just between us girls, you were kind of lucky, weren't you? No, I told you right at the beginning Steve was our boy. I figured if he was willing to confess to murder for Johnny, he might very well have gone whole hog and committed it. I still don't see it. Well, what's so hard? Johnny was Steve's God. All his life, he's wanted to prove his devotion. Well, when he thought Johnny wanted Lisa... He tried to get her for him, even though it meant killing her husband. That's right. You think he's crazy? Well, what do you think? Well, he certainly was sane when he planned that killing... He covered his tracks so well that when he confessed to save Johnny, he couldn't prove it. Uh, isn't that a beautiful hunk of irony? But then the whole case was loaded with the stuff. You think Johnny wanted Lisa? But didn't he? No, I doubt it. I think he just admired her. Oh, give odds you're wrong. I know human nature. He won't stay away from her no more than you could quit this racket. Don't you kid yourself. I have. Maybe so, but I'll lay eight to five. I see you next week. Good night, Mike. 